We are two days into the release of Last Epoch 1.0, and the server issues are still persisting, although there, there has been a lot of improvement and advancements in the game. I personally, myself, have played every evening since the launch of 1.0, and I've played six to seven hours each night. Now, for the first night, I was up against more LE61 errors, but the, my second night of playing in the evening, may I add, I only had one LE61 error. Now, I may be lucky, because my hardcore warlock SSF online, I was able to get him to level 35 in two nights of playing. Um, but at the end of the day, the problem still exists as we speak. So in this video, I want to cover several topics. Number one, we're going to continue. We're going to cover the topic of even with all these issues with 11th hour games last epoch there are still players flooding this game so we're going to speak to that we're going to dive into the numbers and see where currently the numbers are at that's the first thing the second thing is now i am not a technical person so please take this with a grain of salt when we do get into the deep dive of what I suspect, or I went out and got some knowledge from so-called technical ex experts to kind of understand what what exactly is happening here. Now, I've seen every single post from 11th Hour Games about what is happening, the technical issues, as they explained it to us on social media, on Reddit. So we've all seen those posts and I just, I, you know, it's just the nature of who I am. I like to understand why, and I wanted to dig deep. Now, I'm not a technical expert, so I went out and gave the information to s some of the people that I know that are technically inclined, and I wanted their opinions on what it meant and if they had any opinions. So we're going to go into that, and I'll explain more later on in the video when we go into the technical slash from a non-technical guy uh, part of the video. But I wanted to, we are coming up on the weekend. We are 24, 48, like the next 72 hours are only going to get, 11th hour games is going to be tested even more. And what do I mean by that? This game, I think strategically was launched on a Wednesday for this reason they thought if we're going to have problems we launch it on a wednesday we have wednesday thursday and friday before the weekend to fix it right now no one could expect this unbelievable misstep and issues that are happening in the game i don't think as well prepared as any development studio could be i don't think anyone could have seen this coming i don't know that's my opinion but my point is strategically and wisely, they planned this launch on a Wednesday to give them that buffer before the weekend because I would argue that on the weekends is where you're going to get your highest volume of players trying to log into the game. Um, so that's why they launched it on Wednesday. So the next 72 hours as we're on the eve of the weekend is going to be very critical for this game because as the recording of this video they are still having issues. Players are still reporting that they cannot log in. Now, that's not the case for everybody, but if the problem still exists, it still exists. Whether it's for a small minority of players or a large minority of players, it still exists. So we're going to cover that topic, but I'm really interested in how this is going to play out over the next 72 hours. So let's get to the first topic the current <laughs> player count and let me refresh this there's a hundred and ninety two thousand players currently on the game a hundred and ninety two and as you can see from friday morning till present 
this number continues to scale up, it's going to supersede 200K. And how further up? Who knows? So their 24-hour peak was 193, say 194,000, okay? 194,000 was their 24-hour peak. That number continues to get slammed every four or five hours. 194,000 players was the peak. 192 on right now. This game, the players are still coming in droves, even with all of the negativity that's out there in social media and people slamming the game that they can't log in, yada, yada, yada. Now, there are many solutions to this, and I'm sure 11th Hour Games will get down to the bottom of it and fix it eventually. The question is not if, but when. How quickly can they do it? And they are on the dawn of um, the weekend, which is going to be a critical time, like I said. Uh, but it's very interesting to note that the players continue to come to this game nonstop. So let's look at what has transpired from 11th Hour Games. And 22 hours ago, they did a online service update. And they basically said that they were going to do it. They have done many. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to scroll through all of them to literally an update 1030 this morning. We have multiple deployment updates planned for today. That's on top of the multiple ones they did on day one. And they're for today, they'll keep everyone posted on. The team has been hard at work to figure out the bottlenecks we're having with the high load. Our goal is to increase stability, address slowed services that are wrestling in increased load times and sometimes disconnects or the inability to log in. And that's basically... 11th hour games since it started. Now remember, 150,000 players slammed this game the second it was available on Wednesday. On a Wednesday afternoon, 150,000 players slammed this game. Unbelievable. I don't think anyone could have seen that coming. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but that is unbelievable. But now that I've kind of giving you the landscape and you're probably aware of it already 11th hour games has been very and kudos to them they've been very transparent very communicative keeping us updated for those of us that are on their discord channel you can see literally every, like when this first happened they were literally giving a play-by-play -play on every like every half an hour it was unbelievable i've never seen this kind of transparent communication before just hats off to them now they have an issue their game isn't working and players are frustrated and that gets me to what's happening because everyone's talking about the review bombing so we'll go back to steam db and they had a very very high rating overly overwhelmingly positive and it's now down to positive that number is now at 74 percent that number was 10 15 20 points higher yesterday so unfortunately for 11th hour games a lot of people are getting impatient and this number keeps going down now there are still more positives obviously than negative but the fact is there's a little trend happening here and let's hope for the game's sake and for 11th hour game's sake, this number stops and goes back the other way. Because in all honesty, from my experience of playing 1.0, this number should be much higher because it is a good quality game. And if you played it, you know what I'm talking about. But the fact is, here's the fact. This number has gone down and is going down and is getting review bombed. Take that for what it's worth. But the main point of this video is I sat back 
and I'm watching all this communication and I'm thinking, like, how could they have not seen this coming? Like, you could have, you know, and a layman, right? I'm not a technical person. What happened here? This is big. This is not just you can't queue in. There's long wait times, right? This is worse than that. People are getting can't get in the game, or when they get in the game, they're frozen. They can't transition to the next scene. So it got me thinking, is it as simplistic as they just should have had more server space? Like, again, layman thought, right? I'm not a technical guy, nor an expert. So please remember that as I go down this rabbit hole. So it got me thinking, you know what? What is, what what potentially is the problem? Um, I, I wanted to get so-called experts viewpoint. So I took the information, all the latest logs from 11th Hour Games and what they were doing, what they were encountering, like people can't log in. People, when they do log in, get the LE61 error. People can't transition into the next scene, et cetera. All the stuff that we're aware of, right? So I presented that to a couple of people that I reached out to that are so-called technology experts. And I said, is this just as simple as a server thing? Like more servers would solve it. And they gave me, <laughs> I got a lot of information back. Um, so I'm gonna do my best and forgive me, I'm gonna have to read it uh, because I'm not a technical person, but I'm gonna hopefully my intent of this video is to educate people a little bit more on the technical side of what's going on in the back. And hopefully it'll help maybe calm you down a little bit if you're you're on the ceiling right now and kicking and screaming. Not that this is an excuse. I'm not trying to defend 11th hour games. I'm just trying. I always like to understand things. So that's the premise of why I'm doing this video. So. But please keep in mind, I am not a technical expert, nor do I want to be. But I'm going to try to give you my spin and 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 bring it down to a layman term so someone even like myself could understand. So I asked them what could be the potential issues. Is this just a server thing? And here's a couple of highlights that I got back. And that was so... Excessive login volume is one of the primary bottlenecks in the sheer volume of log data generated during gameplay. This can overwhelm the system, leading to increased disk IO operations and memory consumption. So what causes this? Every action, event, or error within the game generates log entries, resulting in large volume of logging activity. This explains why we can't transition scenes and why players are not able to log in. There's these bottlenecks, but I'm gonna go further, okay? High login verbosity, verbosity. Another bottleneck is the high verbosity of logging where excessive details are logged even for routine events consuming additional resources. So again, I asked them what causes this? Logging levels are set too high, resulting in the capture of unnecessary or redundant information, okay? And as soon as they told me that, immediately my mind went to this. You know, I can't believe it. A new game comes out and you have these players that are spamming in-game chat for this B pet, you know, refer me, refer my code, refer my, like, so I'm thinking as when I, when I was told this, that, you know, um, result capture of unnecessary or redundant information. All I thought, the first thing that popped into my head are all these players refer my code, refer my code, refer my code, spamming, right? Like, so the B pet issue could, could have potentially even 
exact um, created the problem even further. I don't know. Just that's my honest reaction when I was told that. That's the first thing that popped into my head. Now, thank God, Eleventh Hour Games jumped in and said, "Hey, we're we're disabling this, and everyone's going to get the B pet." And once this is all solved, so you do not have to spam the in-game chat, refer my code, refer my code, the refer a friend thing, like unbelievable. A new video game's coming out and they're worried about getting pets, like poof, unbelievable. Um, so that may have added to the problem or not. I don't know, but that's the first thing that popped into my head. Okay. Here's where we're going to get a little bit technical, okay? So forgive me. And if I mispronounce the words, don't slam me. Synchronous logging operations. So logging operations performed synchro <laughs> synchronously within the main game thread can cause delays and impact real-time gameplay performance. I'm going to explain this, guys. So bear with me and bear with my mispronunciations. So... What's the cause of this stuff, right? So logging operations blocking the main thread leading to latency and slowdowns. So synchronously is a single thread. Here's where we get technical. So only one operation or program will run at a time. Run at a time. Synchronously is blocking it will only send the server one request at a time and wait for that request to be answered by the server. It's slower and more methodical. Okay, bear with me. Inefficient log writing mechanisms such as frequent disk writes or lack of log buffering can exacerbate performance issues. What's the cause of this? Log entries being written to disk inefficiently, leading to increased disk IO, IO operations and resource contention. Add all this up together and you get a tremendous amount of inefficient logs bogging down the system. Okay. Another issue could potentially, these are all potential issues. I'm not saying this is what's happening. Suboptimal log rotation. Inadequate log rotation policies can result in large, unwielding log files that consume excess disk space and impact performance. What's the cause of this? Log files not rotated or managed properly, leading to bloated log files and increasing disk usage. Now, again, you see a theme here, right? Unnecessary logs, inefficiency logs, this is all slowing down the system, taking more space, resources, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Okay, so this is where we're going to get into the weeds, so bear with me. Another potential, again, these are potentials, lack of asynchronous logging. Absence of asynchronous logging mechanisms can hinder performance by tying up critical resources during logging operations. In other words, if you don't have controlled timing protocols in which a specific operation begins until receipt or indicator, a signal of a preceding operation has been completed. So if you don't have asynchronous logging mechanisms, nothing is blocked from happening. So other logging mechanisms can trigger tying up resources. See, there's two types of, if I can try to explain this, there are two types of architecture, right? There's asynchronous and synchronous. So async and sync, okay? So I don't have to say those words over and over and over. So async, multiple tasks can happen. It doesn't rely on a previous task being completed until the next task, right? Async. A lot of things can get done, no problem. Sync works in order. In other words, task B cannot start until task A is completed. Task C can't start until task B is completed, et cetera, et cetera. So sync blocks. Async does not block, if that makes any sense. So 
The cause of this potential cause is logging operations performed synchronous with the sync architect, which is a blocking architect, blocking critical resources and introducing latency. So the lack of async in the programming can produce problems, latency. So again, I don't know which architect 11th hour games is using, but this could be, a, if they're using sync and players are logging in, they can't, like I said, B can't trigger until A is done. C can't, like, so you can see the blocking, which causes logs, which causes tying up of resources. Again, layman talk, but that's how I think of it. So the lack of asynchronous architect could potentially be an issue. Okay, so I asked the question originally to them, is it just a lack of servers? And here's kind of the summary I got from them. Getting more servers could potentially help alleviate some of the issues, especially if the current servers are overloaded due to high player volume. Now, we know it's high player volume. However, and this is where my eyes whoop opened up, based on the development information I provided them, the root cause of the problem appears to be excess logging rather than a lack of server resources. Simply adding more servers may not directly address the underlying issue of excess logging and could potentially lead to increased operational costs without effectively resolving the performance issues. Now, for those of you, because I've seen a small amount of rhetoric around, oh, they just cheaped out and they didn't want to spend the money on all the servers. This kind of debunks that if this theory is correct. Again, take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. This is just speculation, okay? It's essential to first optimize logging mechanisms and address any inefficiencies in server-side processes to ensure that existing service resources are utilized efficiently. Once logging is optimized and server-side processes are streamlined, additional services could be beneficial in handling increased player load and improving overall scalability. However, it's crucial to prioritize identifying and addressing the root cause of the performance issue before considering scaling up server infrastructure. Excuse me. Okay. Whew. My brain hurts. Now, why the hell did I go down this rabbit hole? Good question. I asked myself the same thing. <laughs> but no, I'm a why kind of guy. I, I, I love knowing. I love asking why and I love finding out. And I'm glad I went down this rabbit hole. You want to know why? Because probably like many other players and people observing this um, this thing happening right now with Last Epoch 1.0 and the server issues, the logging and all that kind of stuff. Initial reaction is, man, why didn't they just get more servers? You know, have two times the amount of servers and this would not be a problem. Well, guess what, guys? It's not that easy. It's not that simple. Sorry. Um, this is very complicated stuff. Duh. Of course it is. Um, but I wanted to make this video, number one, because I wanted to reveal what information I got, but it opened up my eyes. There are a lot, a lot of details when it comes to programming a game that are so critical. Again, duh, uh, but unbelievable. So I don't think it's a server, uh, amount of server space, whatever you want to call it. I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is... and. If you refer to their logs and, and what they're communicating to us, it kind of correlates that they're trying to figure out all these different logging issues, transitions, scenes, all these issues that are bogging down their system. 
Um, so it looks like what I was told might be the problem. And look, at the end of the day, 11th hour games, they, they know what they're doing. Um, they have very smart people there and they are going to get the thing done and fixed. Like I said, what may present itself and become more of a problem is if this is going to be prolonged. Because I tell you, I showed you the numbers, right? And I'm just going to off screen, just do a very quick recap. Okay, we're, we're down. So the 24-hour peak was still 194. There's 100, just over 191,000 people playing the game right now. It's not going down, guys. That number is going to go north of 200. How further up, I don't know, on the weekend, for sure. No one's stopping from coming to this game. Why? And this is a testament to 11th Hour Games. They clearly have created a buzz. They clearly have created a game that many people are enjoying. I myself, I can't wait to log back into the game every night. I can't. It's I'm really enjoying my playthrough. Um, by the way, if you want to come and watch me, I stream every evening. I'm doing a hardcore run on the new Mastery Warlock, and I just want to see how far I can get. And I love playing hardcore. So I, I stream on Twitch and YouTube, Sammy Caps. Come and check me out. I'd love to have you, and we can continue this debate. But there's a critical point happening in the next 72 hours, and that's this weekend. Can 11th Hour Games get this fixed? Because if they thought 150, 160, 180, 190,000 players was, wow, you know, they were humbled, as they said. They're going to be humbled even more over the weekend. This is, wow. Anyway, um, if you are, if you have a background in programming, if you have a Pro, um, a background in game development, I would love for you to chime in, get in the comment section and tell me what you think of what I discussed in this video today. Am I off my rockers? Am I way out in left field? Am I anywhere near? I would love to really get some technical uh, critiquing from the community. So jump in there, please. I would love to get your feedback. Um, because I don't know, to me, it kind of makes sense. I, I can see the correlation of what was told to me from so-called experts, right? So let me know, tech guys, hear me and girls, let me hear your thoughts. I would love to hear it. And for the player base, how has your 1.0 journey been with last epoch? How you doing? I know the people that are coming into my chat on a nightly basis, some complain about still not being able to log in. I'll, but I have to say, a lot of positive comments. They're having um, an amazing time with the class they chose, with the mastery they chose. They're looking forward to level, you know, yada, yada, all that stuff, right? So, um, of course, I'm getting both. But I want to hear from the player base. What are your thoughts? If you haven't bought the game, let us know why. Are you waiting till this all gets ironed out? By the way, guys... This game has an offline mode. So if you really that desperate, play offline. Well, Sammy, I want to play online. I want to play with my friends. I get it. That's that's a legitimate reason and complaint. You should be able to look at the end of the day. I'm not making excuses for 11th hour games. You bought a product. It should work as intended. No questions asked. And even though it's lower than a typical uh, video game, the pricing I'm referring to, doesn't matter. $35 is still a lot of money, and we all work hard for our money, so you have a right to get what you paid for. So I get it. But if you haven't bought the game, what are you waiting for? Has this completely turned you off, and it doesn't matter? You're never going to buy the game anyway. You don't like what you're seeing right now. Let me know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Get into the comment section. I really want to hear and get into a deep dive in the comments on this video because I do want to uncover this and we are going to learn more and more. The one thing that really has shined big time too, of course, the problems is the showstopper right now. Nothing is going to overcome that. This is a big problem, a huge problem. They got to overcome it. 
But the other thing that's evident with this studio and is remain true to their identity, and we knew this before the launch, but it's just even further enhanced, at least my opinion of them. 11th Hour Games, you will never criticize them for not being honest, transparent, and letting us know what's going on. And I applaud them for that. In the face of adversity, they remained true to their core. Truth, honesty, transparency. Wow. That's hard to do when you're getting slapped around like they are right now. Kudos to them, hats off to them, staying true, true to who they are. I applaud them for that, and I wish them all the best. I know they're going to get this game fixed, and we can start talking about all the beautiful things in this game and all the five classes, each class three masteries, the, the itemization, the crafting, the trading, the new facts, like on and on and on and on. This game is going to absorb a lot of players' times. I'm Of that, I'm relatively sure of. But anyway, let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them. And as always, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And we'll hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.